Uh, the last video I did was getting too long, um, so I chopped it in half and posted the first bit. So this is the second bit, with this bit tacked on the beginning, and uh, uh, another bit tacked on the end. Um, so apologies in advance if you notice any continuity issues. I put the same colour shirt on, but I might be sitting in a slightly different position, and the lighting might be different. Anyway, so here we are, another day. I've done a lot more testing. Of course, one thing might be that um, the, a better configuration would be to have individual heaters on each individual filament. But that gets complicated. Uh, six different heaters and, well, seven it would be. And all the filaments have still got to end up at a central point if you're just using a single nozzle. Maybe the configuration I've got isn't the best, but it's possibly the best compromise. Anyway, the first thing I wanted to determine was what is the lowest temperature in the combining block? Or what is the lowest temperature I can run the combining block at and still extrude reliably? So, I starting with PLA, I loaded it with, loaded all six inputs and I heated both the combining block and the hot end to 185 degrees and extruded lots of filament through all the inputs at that. The reason being that the heat break isn't, it's fairly efficient but trying to hold the filaments below their glass transition point would be challenging shall we say. So it's obvious that any filament in the combining block is going to expand and fill the channels through which it um, through which it travels. And obviously, you know, if the channels were a large enough diameter and there was an air gap all around and you could keep the fill filament cool enough, then that would be a different um, proposition. So by heating both the combining block and the hot block to 185, that will ensure that the filament has molten and filled every cavity. And that would be the worst starting point. So I basically did that and then let it cool down to ambient. So then heating again with everything full of filament, um, I then wanted to determine the coolest temperature that I could reliably extrude at the coolest temperature for the combining block, that is. And I found that to be 155 degrees C. Regardless of what temperature I run the hot end, the actual hot block. So that could be anything between from 185 to 210 I tried, but it always required 155 as a minimum in the combining block. So having having determined that temperature I let everything cool down again and then just heated. It did seem uh, just visually observing what was coming out of the nozzle that I probably want to run at um, a more normal hot end temperature. Generally mixing hot ends for whatever reason I found that they tend to need to run at the low end even or even below the lowest that manufacturers recommend. So typically PLA at 185 um, has often worked best. Just observing what was coming out of a nozzle, it just seemed that a higher temperature is going to work better. I obviously need to print some temperature towers to determine that. But it looks like I would be better off with a, a normal hot end temperature if I can keep the combining block a little bit cooler. But that's more sort of gut feel than any scientifically based um, assessment. But what I did notice, um, almost immediately was there was much reduced oozing during the warm-up phase. Mixing hot ends are quite notorious for, for oozing probably because of the volume of plastic that's in the melt chamber. Um, this was much reduced by using a lower temperature of the combining block and just heating the, the nozzle part. So then the next thing I wanted to know was whether there was or what the impact was on this hydrolyzing um, thing where the filament just gets runnier and runnier and runnier the longer it's held at print temperature. So I've observed this before after even half an hour 
just leaving the hot end like half an hour and then extruding you can see it, um, what comes out is akin to water really it just runs out so I tried that after half an hour and I couldn't see I hardly I couldn't notice any difference between filament coming out after the hot end had just reached its temperature and after it had been held for half an hour it appeared visually to look pretty much the same so I left it running at that temperature um, kind of 190 on the, on the hot end I think it was and 155 on the combining block uh, left it for a, another half an hour and then extruded again um, all these extruders were 100 mil in length by the way and after half an hour I could definitely see the, the filament had gone quite sorry after an hour in total the filament had started to hydrolyze and it was getting quite runny so it's a lot better by running the combining block at a lower temperature but it hasn't cured the problem of hydrolyzing um, completely so the next thing I did was to load some PETG this was in a, an input that had previously been loaded with PLA um, I didn't bother trying to um, retract it I just extruded it I just chopped the filament off and extruded and then pushed some more PETG on until the extruder grabbed hold of the PETG and, and used the PETG to push through the PLA um, so I extruded about uh, a metre I guess um, to try and get rid of all the PLA that might have been in that input and for PETG I found that um, at a nozzle temperature of around 220 um, the combi or regardless of the nozzle temperature I should say anything between 220 and 250 I tried um, although 250 is probably a bit hot for PETG but um, at those temperatures the um, combining block needs to be at 180 which means that I could uh, without a doubt print um, multi-part object that was part PLA part PETG because I could run the combining block at 180 and have the nozzle at 220 um, so the PLA would be fine and the PTFE lined heat breaks at the top of the combining block would also only ever see 180 degrees so probably the temperature of the combining block needs to be at the melt temperature when the when the temperature of the filament starts to flow um, I think that's probably what's going on there uh, so 155 seems about right for PLA and 180 for PTG it might be possible to improve on that a few things come to mind what, what is the optimum size of the holes through the combining block I just drilled some 1.8mm holes, maybe bigger would help, maybe smaller would help, I don't know. What I do think certainly would help is that the finish on those holes should be as smooth as possible to reduce friction. Um, now currently they're just drilled, um, just with a 1.8mm bit, so the finish ain't that good. Um, so if they were reamed or honed or honed uh, in some way and or they could be coated um, they could be PTFE coated because even at high hot end temperatures the combining block is very much cooler so I suspect that honing those holes and or, or coating them with PTFE and the block itself is just it's just aluminium it's nothing exotic you know copper alloy maybe zinc plated copper alloy um, with or without PTFE coating that might help things along as well lots to do lots to think about I don't currently have any um, high temperature filament such as polycarbonate or um, anything like that but from what I've managed to glean uh, on the internet is that polycarbonate will start to flow at 150 if that's true then there's no reason why I couldn't run the combining block at say 180 
uh, with PLA loaded in it and still print at say 320. So back to today, that's where we're at. Um, what I need to do is get hold of some more um, filaments to try. I need to ascertain the temperature profile for uh, as many filaments as I can get hold of really I guess um, to see what's the lowest temperature I can run the combining block at and still extrude reliably. I buy all my filament from uh, 3D filler print. It's kind of a one-stop shop. They sell just about every filament you could um, want to get your hands on um, and also their own brands as well. Prices are always reasonable and the service is just excellent. I'll put a link down in the description so um, take a look. But anyway, um, Tim K from 3D Filament has stepped up and, and offered to um, provide me with samples of, um, of any filament that I should want. So I just need to get myself, get my act together and get a list of filaments and uh, he'll send me some samples so I should be able to see exactly what um, what temperatures I can get away with um, in the combining block and the hot end and, and so forth, so that'll be good. And the other thing I want to do is uh, remake this combining block and uh, see if I can get a, a good finish on the on the holes inside it, maybe get it plated. Um, I think I'll probably try making one out of brass this time. Um, the last one took me three days to make because um, trying to get six holes um, equally spaced and then all finishing up in the same plate when they're only 1.8 mil diameter so they're all at sort of compound angles and so forth and trying to get them all to end up in one point it's quite difficult especially with aluminium because with a with a tiny 1.8 mil drill you end up drilling them two or three mil and then retracting it get a swarf out and then do another two or three mil and it just takes forever um, so brass might be a, a better option for that I'm going to give it a try and then maybe see if I can get it plated and then see about getting it PTFE coated as well. So there's all that to do as well as testing these other filaments when Tim, when I get my act together and when Tim sends them through. But in the meantime, uh, another thing I've done is um, going back to this thing that I keep banging on about, about hot ends or mixing hot ends being good at um, high melt rates. Uh, I've done some tests on this one um, using all six filaments. Um, so that will be the subject of the next video and be sure to look out for that because it will blow your socks off. It's insane. Anyway, until next time.